You guys loved my video on clothing vocabulary, but you said you needed more. So here's a vocabulary video about shoes. We have so many different kinds of shoes, don't we? In this video, you'll sit down with me and my sister-in-law, Lisa, while we go over many kinds of shoes and other vocabulary words relating to shoes. You'll get more comfortable pronouncing words like leather and ankle. You'll also learn new terms in American English like shearling and fancy pants. I brought my sister-in-law Lisa here to crowdsource, help me go through some shoes. She's brought a bunch. Let's see. Probably too many. No, no such thing as too many shoes. Now, Lisa just told that me- That is an argument in our house. <laughs> <laughs> These are basketball shoes. Right. These are my daughter's basketball shoes. There's more support in the ankle there. Okay. I was saying yeah. I'm used to only ever seeing high top basketball shoes. I've never seen low top basketball shoes. There we talked about two different styles of shoes, high tops, which go above the ankle, and low tops, which go below the ankle. Pretty self-explanatory. The top of the shoe is either high or low. High tops. Low tops. Say those with me. High tops. Low tops. I was saying I'm used to only ever seeing high top basketball shoes. I've never seen low top basketball shoes. I was afraid to let her wear the low tops. I was afraid yeah. she'd turn her ankle. But, but I guess it's a thing now. Okay. So. Savannah is very athletic because she also she has is. soccer shoes. Cleats. Mm -hmm. Cleats, you would call these. And for some reason, people like to have very different designs. Yeah. They want their cleats to stand out and be okay. different from anyone else's. Cleats. So we talked about basketball shoes, and now we're talking about cleats. Cleats are shoes that have cleats for extra grip on the bottom. You can have soccer cleats, baseball cleats. A lot of sports shoes are called by the name of the sport. Basketball shoes, tennis shoes, running shoes, soccer cleats. For sprinters on a track, their shoes are called spikes, and spikes are much smaller than a cleat. Cleat, cleats, K-L consonant cluster, E vowel, T. Say that with me, cleat, cleats. The word spike, S-P consonant cluster. Some people think they should make this a B. Not true, it's a very light P. Sp sp spike, spikes. Say those with me, spike, spikes. There's one thing I want to say about tennis shoe. One word ends in an S, tennis. The next word begins with SH, shoe. We actually link these words together and the SH takes over the S. You may have noticed we don't say tennis shoe, tennis shoe. We don't make an S and then an SH. We drop the S and connect with the SH, tennis shoe, tennis shoe. Say that with me. Tennis shoe. The same is true of the word dress shoe. We drop the S at the end of dress and connect with an SH. Dress shoe. Dress shoe. A dress shoe can be a term for either men's shoes or women's shoes that are more formal. So what other sports do you wear cleats in? Baseball, right? Mm -hmm. Baseball, soccer. And track. Runners have right. different... Those are called spikes. Right. Yeah. Ah, okay. But similar. All right, we got some boots here. Lots of boots. So this is the kind of boot I tend to wear to work in the winter. It I, helps keep the leg warmer okay. when it comes up yeah. high. Is this a riding boot or is the riding boot the one that's black and brown? This kind of boot can be called a riding boot. It's basically a high boot with a defined heel that can fit into stirrups. Of course, most people buy them for fashion and not for horseback riding, which is what they were originally made for. Riding boot. Did you know that writing sounds just like this word, writing, because of the flap T? Writing. Writing boot. Say that with me. Writing. Writing boot. The word boot. Here the letters O-O make the OO sound, so your lips come into a tighter circle and then relax. I'll do it slowly. Watch my lips. Boot. 
The movement into and the movement out of the lip position is important. You don't want them to just be a tight circle the whole time. Boot, boot, boot. That sounds too closed. Boot, boot. Relaxed, round in, and relaxed. Say that with me. Boot, boot. Notice I'm making a stop T. You can make this a flap T if you're connecting into a next word that begins with a vowel or diphthong. This is a knee-high boot, basically. Right. It's not right. an above the knee. That's a different boot. There we heard two different terms to describe different kinds of boots. Knee-high means it comes just below the knee. An above the knee boot would look like this. Say those with me. Knee-high, above the knee. This is a knee-high boot, basically. Right. It's not an above the knee. That's a different boot. These are kind of ankle boots. Right. Or is, it, is this an ankle boot or is a boot that goes like that an ankle boot? Or are those I called? I think they both get called ankle boots. And then there's booties, which is funny just because it sounds like booties. Booty, right. <laughs> but those are the ones that are cut like that. Yeah. Ankle boots and booties. What I was holding up was an ankle boot. The pronunciation of ankle is a little tricky because the real pronunciation doesn't match what you'll see in a dictionary. What you'll see in a dictionary is this, the a vowel followed by the ng consonant. A, n, ang, ang, ankle. That's not how we pronounce it, ankle. The ng sound changes the a vowel so it's more like the a diphthong. Ang, ankle, ankle boot. Say that with me, ankle boot. Then we have booty. This can either be a boot like this, or it's also something for newborn babies, like this. They're both called booties. The T here is a flap T because it comes between two vowels, booties. Also, booty is a slang term for your butt. Booties, booties, say that with me, booties. These are kind of ankle boots. Right. Or is, it, is this an ankle boot or is a boot that goes like that an ankle boot? Or are those I called? I think they both get called ankle boot. And then there's booties, which is funny just because it sounds like booties. Booty, right? <laughs> but those are the ones that are cut like that. Yeah. Suede. And suede, definitely. So this is leather. Leather. Different suede. from suede. Leather and suede, two common types of materials that shoes are made of. Leather. This has that tricky th. Here it's voiced. Th, th. Leather. Notice it's just the very tip of the tongue that comes through the teeth. Le th, th. Leather. Leather. Your tongue tip is already forward for the e vowel. For that, it's just behind the teeth. So to make the th, just bring it up, put it out a bit, and then bring your teeth together. Le leather. Say that with me. Leather. Suede. S W consonant cluster, the A diphthong, sway, suede. Usually the S W cluster is written with the letters S W. But in a few cases, like suede or sweet, it's written with the letters S U. Suede. Say that with me. Suede. Suede and suede, definitely. So this is leather. Leather. Different suede. from suede. Right. This one's got shearling inside. Mmm. That's right. a, that is a cozy looking boot. Shearling is that woolly stuff inside, lining the boot. Very warm and comfortable in the winter. The word shearling can refer to a sheep who has had his wool cut off or the wool itself. This word would be written with the I as in sit vowel, but when that's followed by an R consonant in a stressed syllable, it's more like the E vowel, she, shear, shearling. Shearling, say that with me. Shearling. Suede, and suede, definitely. So this is leather. Leather. Different suede. from suede. Right. This one's got shearling inside. Mmm. That's a, right. That is a cozy looking boot. That's what I wear around the house in the winter because I get such cold oh, yeah. feet. 
Did you hear my sister-in-law say? She wears these boots around the house in the winter because she gets such cold feet. Her feet are cold. That's the literal meaning of this phrase. But we also use cold feet as an idiom, and that means something totally different. Do you know this idiom? You'll learn it here next week when we make a video that goes over idioms related to shoes like cold feet, big shoes to fill, and a shoestring budget. So be sure to come back to find that video here next week, Tuesday morning, Eastern time. That's what I wear around the house in the winter because I get such cold oh, yeah. feet. Cold feet. We'll do that next week in the idioms video. That'll be a fun one. That'll be a fun one. <laughs> I um, sure do wish I could see that one now. You sure do. <laughs> Lisa said, shoo do, instead of sure do. I sure do wish I could. This is a pun, a play on words, since we're talking about shoes. Okay, here we have clogs. Yes, those are clogs. Classic. A lot of clogs have a wooden sole. These are rubber. Mm -hmm. Still call it a clog. Clog. We also talked about two possible materials for the sole of the shoes, that is, the part on the bottom that touches the street. They can be wooden, made of wood, or rubber. Clog. The letter O makes the aw as in father sound here. Clog. Say that with me. Clog. When we went over boot, you learned the letters OO make the oo sound. Here in wood, or wooden, they make the uh as in push vowel. Uh, wuh, wood, wooden. Remember, wood and wood are homophones. Their pronunciation is exactly the same. Wood, wooden. Say these with me. Wood, wooden. So here are some more suede boots, and these have a lower heel mm. than the others. So it's different heights of heels go with different outfits. This is high. This is a high yeah, heel. That's I, a high booty. <laughs> I can, yes, this is a high booty, ankle boot. Right. I cannot wear shoes this high. I Sometimes I wear shoes when I need a tall attitude. Yeah. Those are tall attitude shoes. I have noticed yeah. that you're pretty good about being able to wear pretty high heels. You have to just make sure they're comfortable. See, I, that's, to me, it's like not a thing. It can't happen. Right. Very high heels, not comfortable. These tend to not be as comfortable, but when we get to my platforms, okay, those are, even Let's though those are high. Here's so another boots. knee high boot with studs. Yeah. Low I heel. those just because of the studs. So we're talking about heel height. A low heel, a high heel. Just like wood and wood are homophones, heel which refers to the part of the shoe that goes under your heel, the part of the foot, is a homophone with H-E-A-L, like when you heal from an injury. H-E-E-L refers to part of a sole, but also part of a foot. Heel. Say that with me. Heel. You also saw studs on that boot, a decoration that can go on something like a shoe, belt, or jacket. Stud. Studs with the uh as in butter vowel. Say those with me. Stud. Studs. Here's so another boots. knee high boot with studs. Yeah. Low I heel. those just because of the studs. Converse. Whoa, whoa, my goodness. So this these, stuff. what have we here? These are some fancy pants, spiky heeled yeah. sandals that you can't dance in, but of course this is what kids wear to prom. Okay. So that's what I brought these for. Savannah had worn these they're very to dressy. prom one year. So very dressy. Okay, so we heard some terms there. You heard fancy pants and dressy. Dressy is when you wear clothes that are more formal. Not everyday clothes, not even work clothes or business attire, but dressy. You could say, we need to dress up for this event. Dress up. That means you have to wear dressy clothes, more formal clothes like what you might wear to a wedding. Fancy pants is just a more playful way to say dressy. It doesn't have anything to do with pants specifically. Say these with me. Dressy, dressy, dress up, fancy pants. Lisa called the shoes spiky heeled sandals. So she described the heel as being like a spike, tall and slim. 
and the shoes are sandals because of the straps, an open feel. Sandal has the a vowel followed by n in the stressed syllable, which makes it a instead of a pure a. Sa, san, sandal. Sandal. Try that with me. Sandal. Sandal. Converse. Whoa, whoa, my goodness. So this these, what have we here? These are some fancy pants, spiky heeled yeah. sandals that you can't dance in, but of course this is what kids wear to prom. Okay. So that's what I brought these for. Savannah had worn these they're very to dressy. prom one year. So very dressy. Um, you know, I they were they're yeah. Worn Sandals. for an hour, maybe. Open toe. And then taken off. Another term, open toe. This means, of course, that the toes are exposed. Open toe. Say that with me. Open toe. Maybe. Open toe. And then taken off. Now, see, this isn't quite a stiletto. A stiletto mm. is where this is maybe a quarter inch wide max. Right. Really comes to a point. Mm. Very thin. So it's a high heel, not quite a stiletto. Sandal, open toed. Stiletto. Not the most comfortable shoe out there. The double T here is a flap T because it comes between two vowels and doesn't start a stressed syllable. Stiletto. Not stiletto. T -t -t, but stiletto. Da -da -da -da. Stiletto. Say that with me. Stiletto. Now see, this isn't quite a stiletto. A stiletto mm. is where this is maybe a quarter inch wide max. Right. Really comes to a point. Mm. Very thin. So it's a high heel, not quite a stiletto. Sandal, open toed. Don't think we'll ever understand that prom culture. Oh, these dressy ones I wore to your wedding. But nice. Sometimes when you want to do something dressier, mm -hmm. they'll have like a little flower on Close there. Close toe. Or I don't know, ankle strap. ankle strap, I guess you would call that. So is this, this is a pump. Wouldn't you call that a pump, Christina? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even with the ankle strap? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Still a pump. Pump, ankle strap, closed toe. A pump is a high heel that's not a boot or a sandal. It can be a peep toe. What's peep toe? I actually have a peep toe clog right here. So peep toe is on a pump or it could be a in a two-part sandal like this, where there's a little bit cut out where just the toes would come through, but the rest is covered. They're just peeping through. Peep toe. Say that with me. Peep toe. An ankle strap, that's self-explanatory. Closed toe shoe. The opposite of open toe, the toes are not exposed. Notice you don't really hear the D here. It comes between Z and T, and sometimes we drop the D between two other consonants. It gets lost here in the other sounds. You can just drop it and connect Z to T. Close toe, close toe, close toe shoe. Say that with me, close toe shoe. Oh, these dressy ones I wore to your wedding. But nice. Sometimes when you want to do something dressier, mm -hmm. they'll have like a little flower on close there. Close toe. Or I don't know, just ankle, strap. ankle strap, I guess you would call that. So is this, this is a pump, wouldn't you call that a pump, Christina? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even with the ankle strap? Yep. Yeah, okay. still a pump. Now these, Oh yeah. even though they look high-ish, if you think about the platform, right. there will be another one. It's really not much yeah. of, but I love this because I feel tall in them. Yeah, I'm and a, they're comfortable. I'm a big fan of platforms. Yeah. Because as someone who's short, I also like to have some height, yeah. but I can't handle it all being in the heel. So I, I love to do platforms. I actually like flat forms. Have you heard this phrase before? No. Oh. It's when the toe part and the heel part are basically the same height. Mm. I might have some flat forms. Flat forms? <laughs> okay. Flip flops? <laughs> oh, flat form flip flops. Oh, I don't think I brought those, though. That's okay. Oh, my. Platform and flat form. Platform shoes have some height under the toe and even more under the heel, like Lisa's boots. Flat forms are more or less equal throughout, like these. I have a pair of orange flat forms, which I love. So the heel is a little bit higher than the toe, but not much. I think this still counts as a flat form shoe. Flat form is a word that was made up recently. It's a play on words. It's a platform 
but your foot is flat instead of having a higher heel. I did notice this word has been taken up by several online dictionaries like Macmillan, Oxford, and Collins. So I guess we can say it's an official word now. Platform. Flatform. Say those with me. Platform. Platform. I'm a big fan of platforms. Yeah. Because as someone who's short, I also like to have some height, yeah. but I can't handle it all being in the heel. So I, I love to do platforms. I actually like flat forms. Have you heard this phrase before? No. Oh. It's when the toe part and the heel part are basically the same height. Mm. I might have some flat forms. Flat forms? Okay. Flip flops. <laughs> oh, flat forms. Oh, I don't think I brought those, though. That's okay. Oh, my. But these platforms, these sandals. Yeah. I wear these to work, and they're very comfortable. Really? And you'd never guess. But if you think about it. It's really only that much of a wedge heel. Yes, and that's called a wedge because the ah. whole thing is filled in. This one, we have the heel and then the toe part. So because of this, this is not a wedge, but that's a wedge. Wedge, a wedge shoe, something that's thick and then tapers. It's also a verb we use to cram something into a tight space. For example, I can't wedge one more thing into my suitcase. It's totally full. Wedge. Say that with me. Wedge. Yes, and that's called a wedge because the ah. whole thing is filled in. This one, we have the heel and then the toe part. So because of this, this is not a wedge, but that's a wedge. Yeah, good point. Oh, are these hiking shoes? Yes, these are my waterproof oh. hiking boots. Boots, and yeah. And they really did keep me dry. Yeah. So yeah, this was important. When I was hiking in Iceland, it was very wet this summer. Mm -hmm. Hiking boots or shoes, waterproof. Just like we talked about earlier with running shoes, basketball shoes, tennis shoes, this shoe is named by what you use it for, hiking. You need good treads on the bottom to help prevent slipping as you're going down a mountain. You need good ankle support. You can have a hiking shoe which goes below the ankle or a hiking boot which goes above the ankle. Hiking boot, hiking shoe. Say those with me. Hiking boot, hiking shoe. Waterproof, a very good quality to have in certain shoes. This means water can't get in. Waterproof, we have a flap tee in water. Wa -da 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 -da. Water, water, waterproof. Say that with me, waterproof. Yes, these are my waterproof oh. hiking boots. Boots, and yeah. They really did keep me dry. Yeah. So yeah, this was important. When I was hiking in Iceland, it was very wet this summer. Mm -hmm. And my toes were so warm. Yeah. So, so this happy. is a boot instead of a shoe because it mm -hmm. comes up a little bit higher where the ankle would be. Right. I have hiking shoes. So then are your shoes lower? It's cut here? like a sneaker, but it's that solid base. It's that same waterproof idea. Actually, yes. I had to get rid of them because I, I propped my feet up on too close to the campfire once. I do that a lot. Yeah. When you get rid of something, you throw it away or give it away. Unfortunately, I had to throw away these shoes because the campfire melted the soles. I also said the word sneaker there. This is a generic term for a shoe that you could wear for sports. It can be a high top or a low top. Sneaker. Ending, unstressed, quick schwa r, er, er, er. Sneaker. Sneaker. Say that with me. Sneaker. Okay, now these, I was really hoping someone had an example of these. Mm, cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Now right. these are like pretty intense. That is a pointy toe. I do have different variations of cowboy boots when I want to be real serious about it. These are the ones yeah. I go to because that's nice. got the pointy toe. So and it's stitching on the side. And this sort of shape up top, leather, and yeah, the embroidery, lowish heel, that's sort of what makes just a cowboy boot. Straps to pull them on. Right, there's no zipper or snaps or anything. Cowboy boot. We tend to call them that even when girls wear them. Cowboy, stress on the first syllable. Cowboy boot. Say that with me. Cowboy boot. Also, I said the phrase pointy toe, which means the toe box of the shoe is very pointed. I said pointy with a T. And when Lisa said it, she said pointy without a T. Why? It's common to drop the T after N. If you're not going to drop it, then it's a true T. Pointy or pointy. 
either pronunciation is okay. Listen to that part again. Cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Now right. these are like pretty intense. That is a pointy toe. I do have different variations of cowboy boots when I want to be real serious about it. These are the ones yeah. I go to because that's nice. got the pointy toe. So it's stitching on the side. And this sort of shape up top, leather, and yeah, the embroidery, lowish heel. That's sort of what makes just a cowboy boot. Straps to pull them on. Right. There's no zipper or snaps or anything. Cowboy boot. What are these with the laces? So these are my snow boots and they're nice and fuzzy inside and mm -hmm. this so this is what I wear to walk the dog okay. in the winter. You wouldn't be able to wear those other fuzzy ones no because they would just get saturated yeah. and wet. Yeah. Okay, so these are your waterproof lace up snow boots. Snow boots. Snow boots. Snow boots. Yeah. Snow boots. Depending on where you live, you must have these to survive winter. They're warm and they're waterproof. Snow boots. O oh, diphthong. Snow. Snow boots. Say that with me. Snow boots. You can also have rain boots, which you want to be waterproof, but they don't have to be so warm. But they're usually pretty hot because they're made out of rubber. Rain boots. There are other terms for these too, like galoshes. Galoshes. Make sure you're saying a schwa in that first syllable. G, g, galoshes. Rain boots. Here are my rain boots. Pretty simple, green, easy to slip on and take off. Rain boots. Galoshes. Say those with me. Rain boots. Galoshes. When discussing snow boots, we mentioned their lace up. This is different from Velcro, like Stoney's shoes. Let me show you his cute little sandals. That's the sound of Velcro, isn't it? So you can have lace up, you can have Velcro, you can have slip-ons. Slip-ons are shoes that don't fasten in any way, like my rain boots. An example of a slip-on would also be a loafer, which is a shoe shaped like this. Say those with me. Lace up, Velcro, slip-on. Loafer. Notice in lace up and slip on, we have a linking ending consonant into beginning vowel. Sup, lace up, pawn, slip on. And then that brings us to one of my favorites because this means summer. Flip Little flops. fashion flip flops. Yep. Yeah. Although I do have those platform type flip flops right. too that make me nice yeah. and high. Yeah, right. Flip flops. This is by far the most common term in America to refer to these shoes, and other countries have other terms that they use like thongs. Flip flops. Two FL clusters. The first word is stressed. Flip. Close your lips for the P, but don't release it. P. Just go right into the next F. Flip. Flops. Flip flops. Flip flops. Say that with me. Flip flops. Have you ever heard the term boat shoe? It's a pretty common style in the US in summer. Originally developed, I suppose, for boating, now an everyday shoe. Lisa didn't have any work boots, but these are shoes you would use to do dirty or maybe outdoor work, yard work, construction, you name it. They're often made of leather or rubber. Definitely not a shoe you would wear to the office. Work boots. Say that with me, work boots. And what about when you're at home relaxing? Then you might slip into something more comfortable, slippers. Something you wear around the house. You can slip them on easily. They don't tie, snap, or zip. Slippers. Say that with me. Slippers. One kind of shoe Lisa didn't have is a flat. I don't really have a flat either, but I do have this shoe, which is almost flat. It's got a very low heel. But a flat is a shoe that's this shape with basically no heel. Flat. Sometimes they're called ballet flats because they look a little bit like a ballet slipper. Say that with me. Flat. Flats. What's your favorite shoe and why? Let me know in the comments below. If you're seeing this on Facebook, post a picture of your favorite shoes in the comments. What about clothes? I made a popular clothing vocabulary video you'll want to be sure to check out. 
along with all of my Vocabulary Builder videos. Click here or in the description below. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English. If you want to see my absolute latest video, click here. If you're new to the channel, check out this Where to Start playlist. Click here to subscribe. I make new videos on American English every Tuesday. To be sure we can keep in touch, click here to sign up for my newsletter. You'll get free lessons in your inbox every week.